George Kenner. Today, we're gonna to talk about epoxy and woodworking. I'm gonna share a bit of my journey and how I got to where I am today, including how I made the discs behind me. Stick with me, I think you're gonna find that your view of epoxy and how much you're willing to spend on it will change after you watch this video. And if you have any questions, you're of course free to come into Laser Freedom, that's my Facebook group, and ask any questions, I'd be happy to answer. But again, we're not going to condemn any brand. Several months ago, I walked into a woodworking store in Phoenix, Arizona, and I saw a slab that would make a beautiful table, but it had a crack in it. I knew that I was going to have to fill the crack. So I went about, I followed the instructions. Some of the big guys on YouTube, Blacktail Studios, I watched everything that they were doing, and I thought, I can do that, that's not that hard. I built up the, the dams, I poured the epoxy, and I had a minor leak. I hated that part. So what I decided to do was make my own silicone mold when I decided to make a larger countertop. Now, this is another mold that I made. It's a square, and it'll integrate into the coffee table that I'm going to make with one of these discs. So far I've poured, I think five of the discs and all but two were out of um, different epoxies. I was watching Blacktail Studios and Cam talked about how he had poured a table, sent it to somebody, they hadn't even opened it and the epoxy had yellowed. That sent off a trigger in my brain. He only uses better epoxies, why would this happen? Well, then I, started to think, I went back into my history a little bit, and one time I worked for the government, and they'd invented a new policy called the MSDS sheet, Manufacturer Safety Data Sheet. Anytime a chemical would come in, it had to be presented along with, the, with what was being held in the government facility, so we had these MSDS sheets, Manufacturer Safety Data Sheets. The manufacturer had to tell you what chemicals were in it in the event a uh, hazmat type issue. So I thought, hmm, why don't I get the MSDS sheets from each one of the manufacturers that I've used and I want to compare the information. Am I paying too much for one of these epoxies? Well, one of the things that I found is some of the people will claim manufacturer, other will claim distributor. Now, let's say that you were a large chemical company and you made something like bare paint for Home Depot. Bare Paint would be the manufacturer, not the supplier. The supplier is not going to put the name on it. You're going to know exactly who it is. Not so true with epoxy. You know, I always love using that little glitch editing effect. So MSDS, Manufacturer Safety Data Sheet, let's do a little deeper dive. Now, it has manufacturer and distributor, but sometimes the manufacturer is not listed. That sent off a red flag to me. Why do they call it a manufacturer safety data sheet if the supplier, the distributor can be named and not the manufacturer? <laughs> well, it seems as though the government's update, now it's called a safety data sheet. So I called the government and I said, hey, is this right that the manufacturer doesn't have to be on there? And they said, yeah, that was a change that happened years ago. So the foundation for going to the manufacturer safety data sheet, now it's the safety data sheet. I bet you you could find out who the manufacturer was if you brought a lawsuit because any distributor is gonna wanna throw away that responsibility if there was a problem with a chemical. What I did was I went to what was one of the companies that I found to be the most expensive. Now, I have heard on the internet in different comments, wood groups, even YouTube comments, that one of the big marketing companies, the, one of the epoxy companies, <laughs> well, let's just be honest, is giving all of the wood and epoxy guys that are doing this on YouTube free epoxy to get their word. I have no knowledge of that. I haven't asked anybody about that, but one thing I will tell you is it kind of makes sense. I went to one of the biggest companies that you know I have heard the most about, and they even have a profile of the entire company. I couldn't find a staff chemist, 
and going to their manufacturer safety data sheet, they don't list themselves as a manufacturer, only a distributor of the product. Hmm. So am I paying for marketing? You know, it's, does it make sense for me to stay with the least expensive? If I can't find out exactly what the proprietary mix is, then what really does it matter? Wouldn't it be better to just buy a couple of the least expensive and see if it would work? Again, I'm going to go back to what drove me to even think about this, which was Blacktail Studios saying that they had done an epoxy pour and it had turned a yellow color. That just didn't make sense. I wanted to know, should I spend money on marketing or is the chemical makeup when looking at the safety data sheets very similar? Should I even try? Well, after five of these discs, I'll tell you, the least expensive seems to be doing an equal, if not better job than all the others that I've used. A future so far. the same as yesterday. There is one epoxy that I found the manufacturer safety data sheet was manufactured in Kansas and then they sent the, the end product to Canada and Canada sent it back in. I thought that's an awful lot of money to be spending in shipping. Now you can do all this research. I'm not trying to condemn any party, but go to the manufacturer safety data sheet and see if they're similar or identical products. Each one of the companies will claim that they have a pr proprietary recipe. Well, how much different is it? Is it worth twice as much? Now I'm going to name one that, uh, one product that I used and that's magic resin. This was the least expensive that I could find on Amazon. And I'm going to continue using this because of the results on these discs, you can't tell the difference. Now, one of the things that I did with the discs, instead of pouring it in a cure, in a pure crystalline format, I added a white dye. I kind of like the way that it gives it a little bit of, um, lack of opacity. These are going to be for the top of a coffee table. I'm going to put lights underneath them and they're going to shine up from the bottom. I don't want it to come up unimpeded. I want it to give more of a clouded effect. Also, I have a friend that's dying to get one of these to make a sign out of. So what he'll do is he'll put a, a little bit of a bezel around the back, put the lights inside it, hang it on the wall and put his logo on the front. I think it's a phenomenal idea. One of the things that I found about using this epoxy is if I take and I make the silicone mold, that it, no leaking, no problem. Now making the silicone mold was a bit of a problem and something rather fortuitous happened to me yesterday, which was the, the silicone that I used, I went to go back and buy the same. Well, I, I miscalculated how much I would need. I needed about two more quarts for this than I thought. So what I did was I went to go buy some more. They didn't have any more. When can I get it? I don't know. Amazon popped up and showed me another product, twice as much almost um, material at um, $20 more of the cost. And this is about $100 to make this mold. But once I have the mold, I can make as many of these as I want. And I can use it any way I want. In this, I just took um, foam board that I, foam insulation board and tape that they use for like a Tyvek style tape. I tried to get Tyvek, they didn't have that. Um, so I just got the substitute stucco tape that they had. I've already done this once. I'm going to come back and do another one and we'll do a comparison and see whether I needed to spend more money on that chemical and if the MSDS sheets are basically the same. I encourage you, go out into your garage. I shoot everything, I do everything including shoot these videos in a two car garage and I put my, my car in the garage at night. You can do it. You may have to get a little organized, but it can be done. I encourage you, 
jump on the bandwagon. I hope you subscribe. I always try and bring value information to my followers. If there's anything I can do, email me or come into Laser Freedom on Facebook and join the rest of the people that are like-minded to me that will help you if they possibly can. I wish you the best. Thank you. They seem to be. Oh, see, it's fucking white.